Hello, my name is Karina, and in this podcast, Break Fear, Find Freedom, I have conversations with people just like you who have broken their fear and found their freedom, whatever that may be. And you, and shows you how to do the same. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee or your running shoes, whatever makes you happy, and let the fun begin. Oh, by the way, come take my hand and let's go. The door's opening now. Hello, everyone. Today, I've got the very awesome Dino Miliotis again. And we are starting this very cool um, channel, the two of us, where we're going to be discussing um, business and life. Well, Dino's going to give us our awesome <laughs> insights and a lot of diamonds. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee or grab your shoes and run with earphones. It doesn't matter. And let's begin. Hi, Dino. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about fasten your seatbelts? Let's do that one. Ah, huh? that sounds even better. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? I love that. I'm awesome. Thanks, Dino. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Lots to share. Lots to share. Oh, cool. So let's begin. What happened in your week? Wow. What didn't happen in my week? So, so you know, when, when we first spoke, you know, I'm a guy who wrote a book during COVID, obviously, um, you know, um, Substance Free and uh, Reborn. Okay. And you know what? I mean, I knew that the book was going to resonate, but I didn't, I didn't know how. All right. Yes, I mean, yes. I'm not like I told you before, I'm not a, I don't consider myself an author, more of a, a storyteller. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool what happened. So here's what's happening. OK, <laughs> so I'm getting such a positive response from my readers. Um, they're asking me all kinds of questions. You know, I thought in the beginning it would just be about addiction. Right. Yes, and yes. some of them are. But yes. uh, for the most part, it's it's about life. It's about life. It's about fear. Uh, overcoming fear, overcoming failure, all the cool things. I mean, and it, you know, I got to give you credit, a lot of stuff, topics on your show. Um, and so I started looking at this and, you know, it just hit me. And, and we've talked about this before. You yes, know, yes. everything today is a soundbite. Everything today is a hashtag, and, you know, follow me, like this, share this. And, you know, all that's good. You know, yes, you're, you're talking yes. to a dinosaur who's trying to fit into the new world. <laughs> Uh, and, and I'm trying, but what I noticed, uh, a lot of things don't change. A lot of things don't change. There's something about storytellers, uh, today that's missing. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, now I don't want to date myself, but what the hell I will. Um, so, you know, I remember sitting on my grandfather's lap and I remember him telling me stories of, you know, the war. I mean, we're, we're from a little tiny Island. Uh, in Greece. Okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, when he was a kid, he's telling me, um, you know, what it was like. And I sat there and listened and it just struck me like by today's standards, the kid would say, Hey pops, I got this. I'm just going to Google the war and I know everything yes, I need to yes. know. And, yes. you know, and, and yeah, you're, you're going to get information, but you're, you're missing the whole point of the story. Uh, yes. it, it'll, it'll take you through a real uh, uh, life experience won't it? Yes, and so yes. um, and I started connection. looking at this yes. and just totally fascinated by, by the questions coming in. And so, um, you know, uh, I, like I told you before, I got a, I got a, a PR team and, and they, I'm a handful. <laughs> so they don't know what to, <laughs> how to handle me. Right. But I'm just I love like, that. You so know, cool. <laughs> instead of writing people, you know, one at a time or, you know, whatever, uh, uh, can't you just like, l let me just do a segment. They're like, well, but you don't have a show. I'm like, I know, but, but I'll reach so, so many more people. Yes, and, uh, yes. you know, I'll be able to just tell a little snippet of my life, which by the way, I didn't think was important. Uh, but you know, the cool feedback, the positive yes. reinforcement, you yes. know, my, my story matters, my story matters. And so for me, it was like, you know, uh, okay, let's do this. So I put a couple segments out. Uh, did, did you think the marketing team would stop me? Anyway, I, <laughs> I put a couple segments out and all of a sudden I'm just getting this crazy wave of uh, people 
uh, appreciative, it. how it helped them, uh, maybe a few more questions. And that's what I've been doing since last time we talked. I mean, I'm getting questions in about the contest. Obviously, you know, who who who, who doesn't want to be a millionaire, right? Yes. But, yes, yes. Um, you know, I'm finding that everybody kind of is gravitating towards the same thing. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a plug on the show. It's breaking fear. People are afraid um, yeah. of a lot of things. They're afraid of a lot of things. And and the great thing about uh, my life is for some reason, I was never afraid. I was never intimidated by, you know, others. You know, if you yes. have a college degree or if you're, you know, better looking or if you're taller, or, you know, th that, that stuff didn't bother me. Backgrounds, yes, yes. age, all that stuff, right? And I think it really helped me in life because um, I never compared myself to those people. I was always racing uh, against myself, you know, this just <laughs> crazy belief because I believed that I deserved a better life. I believed that, um, you know, I can't achieve any kind of success. So you ready for a, uh, I'll tell you a real story. If, if, if <laughs> yes, I have time. we're waiting. I yes, talking. I keep talking. All right. So, <laughs> let's, so let's I'm, on this, uh, I'm on this radio show last week, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm not going to mention the name of the radio show, but but it's a structured kind of a show. You know, it's yes. a, an hour long show. I think I have like 16 minutes. Now I sound like one of those celebrities, right? Ooh, you're only going to give me 16 minutes of airtime. Well, 16 minutes is a lot, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I guess. I, whatever. <laughs> but here's the point. I mean, my my the story of my life is so diverse and so storied that it's just really hard to give me 16 minutes. You know, yes, I mean, yes. that's just going to cover like I don't, me opening the door or something like that. But but anyway, I mean, it was great. I was flattered. So I'm doing this radio show and every once in a while, you know, I'm on break and I'm listening, you know, because there's commercials coming on. Yes. And then she decides to take a question. Um, this is before I went on. This is before I went on. So I'm just on hold listening. And it was this lady who had a question about being in a dead end job or so she felt right. Yes, She's yes. basically like, look, I've worked for this company for six years. Um, I think I got a handle on it. I have so many ideas and so much that I can contribute to the company, but I don't think that they'll allow room for advancement for me. Okay. So I'm listening, right? Uh -huh. Understand that just for me to listen and not say anything is really, really hard for me. <laughs> yes, okay? yes. So, but I'm listening. And, and you know, I, obviously the, the radio show host is a life coach. So I'm not going to discredit her. She knows what she's doing. Yes. But she was asking questions like, okay, so you feel you won't get advancement. Can I ask why? And she said, well, because I don't think they advance women um, it's mostly a boys club. Okay. I mean, okay. we've all heard that. And, you know, by the way, I believe that anybody, um, can be successful and there, there are no glass ceilings. It's just what you have in your mind. Right? Yes, yes. So yes. she's, she's, she's basically, you know, talking to her and suggesting now, you know, I don't know a lot about your personal thing, but, um, have you ever thought of talking to maybe some women, uh, in the company that are, you know, kind of in, in a seniority position and yes. kind of get their take. And also, you know, uh, maybe ask, uh, you know, what kind of a boss is this? Is it a boss that enjoys kind of like, you know, talking to you? Or are they more like, you know, through the emails and stuff like uh, that? OK, OK. And so I'm cringing my I'm sorry. I'm cringing my teeth. I was just like this lady's afraid. This yes. lady's afraid. There's no yes. fact. There's no factual proof that this company doesn't hire and promote women. None. Yes. But it was yes. all in her head. It was yes. all in her head. So she's just afraid of just trying, you know, which is just such a sharp contrast, you know, because I'm you know, like thinking about my life. You know, here I am, first business, 16 years old. Wasn't, you know, it's, it's a job. It was a job. OK, yes. but yes. I was hired as an usher in a movie theater. I'm 16 yeah. years old. I, I just want to make money. This was one of three jobs, by the way. OK, but, um, you know, so I'm there, uh, you know, kind of a nowhere job. I guess you consider it a dead end job. I didn't ask about promotion or anything like that. But, yes. you know, when yeah. I got there, uh, an usher has a lot of different 
things. A lot, you know, sometimes they'll rip tickets, they'll sweep popcorn off the floor, they'll even clean the bathrooms. Yes, of um, course. Or, or, or between shows, they'll go in the movie theater and clean up all the garbage and stuff. Yes. I made a game out of it. You know, because, mm. hey, I'm 16 years old. Entertain me. OK, I mean, you know, I'm bored. <laughs> You're bored, so, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so I, I I started making a game out of everything and, uh, you know, how fast I can do something, uh, how efficient I could do something. I started looking and learning all the trades uh, around me in my small little world. OK, yes, never yes. worried about, hey, you know, what advancement. But but here's what happened. Here's what happened when I got so good. OK, um, people took notice, you know, management took notice. So all of a sudden I get the accolades, you know, which everybody likes. Right? Yes, I get the respect of my peers yes, um, yes. And, and, you know, management loved me. So I had like a, you know, I, I, want, I don't want to say privilege, but you know what I mean? You know, I was like royalty in that place. <laughs> Nobody, by the way, has ever beaten my record of uh, cleaning up a theater so fast, uh, but, but anyway, <laughs> I love that was, it. that's pretty so, cool. So, yeah, so, so one <laughs> night, <laughs> right? Where do I come up with this stuff? <laughs> I don't know. That's cool. But, but uh, okay, where was that? So, uh, um, one night I noticed that you know, there were all you know, always, always this couple of vans that used to show up, and it was after hours when the theater was closing. And I'm like, yes. who are these people, you know? And uh, they were telling me, well, this is the cleaning crew. You know, every week they come in and they steam the floors in the uh, theaters because they get sticky. You know what I mean? I mean, yes. it, ma it makes sense. You know, I don't know, but but because I was respected and recognized and all that stuff, I didn't have a problem walking into management. This is 16 years old. And I'm like, yes. hey, you know, that cleaning crew that you have out there, why don't you give me a shot? You know, I'll charge you less. And I could do it. Well, how are yes. you going to do it? I'll get I'll get a bunch of guys from here. They'll do it. And I'll go to, you know, uh, uh, Ace Hardware and I'll rent a, whatever it is you guys use. I don't even know what to call it, but a steamer. A so steamer. When you know it, I got my first gig at 16. I had my first business at 16. And for me, it, it, I didn't think of it like, oh, are they going to say no? Are they going to say yes? You know, I was just like, look, almost always in my life, here's what's happened. Uh, you know, when people are like, well, you know, how did you invent this? How did you think of this? Here's the little secret that a lot of people don't know is, you know, writing my book made me realize that I always got immersed in a trade. I always competed against myself to become yes. like good yes. in that trade. I mean, I, I was good. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And once you're good, almost always you're going to see little things in the market that can improve the trade little what i call voids in the marketplace and that's yes, when yes. i would pounce bam i mean <laughs> i was just there i seized moments and that's how you know i got that entrepreneurial thing that's when i started opening up businesses because for me it was easy and guess what when you create a business when you see a, a need what's missing in your trade yes, yes um guess what it's easy to pitch because the people all around you already know that you're a superstar. You already have the reputation. They already know you. So, yes. you know, guess it, it makes it easy. It makes it easy. So now do you see why 18 minutes isn't enough for a segment <laughs> on the radio show? Uh, it, you know, but, but it's, it's little stories like that, little stories like that, that um, I hope, I hope people realize that, you know, it, it, it's great to think about, you know, that great idea or that new cutting edge way. And those things do happen. I mean, of course, we know that. Yes, but almost yes. always, almost always, the regular people like me, like millions of people around the world, um, those great things are usually right in front of your face. Yes. Um, so instead of just looking like, you know, trying to do something crazy, um, you know, just just kind of like let the market come to you. Let the market come to you. But what that means is hard work. It means challenging yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't don't wait for others to poke you and say, hey, you know what? You should you should be working harder. Just do that on your own. Make it fun. It, I mean, for, at the very least, it passes the time. OK. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's five o'clock. I'm done. Um, but but it's little things like that throughout my life that gave me the courage uh, not to be afraid, but to keep going. How's that for a plug? Break fear, huh? I love that. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. <laughs>
Not well, thank you. And that's just this week, Karina. I love that. Now, um, I've always, I've always loved that kind of thing um, to, to rather keep challenging yourself rather than looking out and, and comparing yourself. You don't, you never know what the other person's life really is. I mean, it's easy you, for them to show you something, but you don't really know the true story. So I love that. So let's just go back. If you were the um, coach, how would you yeah. reply to how would you reply to this that question? Well, I I probably make her cry. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I think I'm, you know what. There's a reason I'm not a life coach. But you know my my way is 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 very aggressive. I mean, it, and again, it's one thing for me to answer somebody. You know, and, and instinctively I'd say, look, you know what, what you're saying really is just what's in your head. There's yes. no fact. There's no proof. So let's talk about it. Have you always felt like this? You know, uh, growing up. That's about as psychological as I'm going to get. <laughs> yes, uh, so, yes. so, but knowing this all my life, I just figured that um, it was easier for me to show people instead of tell them and yes. kind of lead by example. Right. Yes, yes. Um, and this is the first time that I'm just like stopping and seeing the results of, of my actions. I mean, I'm really touching people. I never stopped to look at that, you know, growing up. I mean, you know, growing up, I was just totally consumed and focused with me. And it yes. was like, follow me, follow me. And if you can't catch up, I'll see you later, maybe in the Warner circle, but I got to go. Okay? Yes, yes, but this yes. lady, this lady obviously uh, may have had an experience um, or, or, or took too much merit in, in what others are saying, you know, yes. and again, I mean, it's easy to fall into that trap and start believing you know, uh, mm -hmm. as an example, you know, I'm five foot six. I will never get any taller, even with the hair poofed up. <laughs> I'll never get taller than five foot six. And, you know, so for a lot of people that are shorter, uh, you know, they might think that that's a disadvantage, you know, and growing up, how did you handle that? You know, yes, and you yes. always um, immediately think that that's something that's blocking, um, you know, whatever recognition or attention or, you know, whatever Your it is. Birth, for you. Yes. Uh, I never looked at myself as five, six. I mean, in my head, I always felt like I was 12 feet tall. Mm, now, where does this yes. come from? Where does yes. this come from? You know, um, when I was seven, my dad would tell me that, you know, one, one day you're going to be a rich man because you have a part in your teeth, you know, a Greek, Greek tale. I don't know what that means, but you know what? At seven, I believed it. I mm. believed it. Mm. So from seven years old and on, I believed that I'd be able to do anything anybody else uh, can do and more and more. Like there was no ceiling for me. Yes. Imagine yes. if my father at seven was telling me, you know what, Dino, uh, you should, you know, wear these shoes that have elevated heels because, you know, you're kind of short and you don't want to look short in front of others. Yes. I mean, yes. that's some serious baggage. Yes. <laughs> that I'm yes. going to have to carry with me. <laughs> Thank God he didn't do that. Thank God he didn't do that. Um, so, you know, I, I wish this lady the best. Uh, but, you know, what I would tell her is you don't know until you try. And what's the yes. worst thing that happens? I'm sorry, we're not promoting at this time. So, you know what? Just get good. Just get good at what you're doing. And guess what? If you can't advance in this company, there are other companies that will, you know, take you in a heartbeat or you could start your own. I don't I don't know what company she's in. I don't know what she, you know, so before I open up my mouth, <laughs> let me just stop there. But you, you know what I mean? And it, it all comes from this basic fear that we all have uh, about hearing the word no. Yes. Um, I, I've heard no a lot and it doesn't bother me at all. So. <laughs> Yeah, you so know. you, but you obviously, because you had this this wonderful self belief, and you had a really good father, right? Um, because he he promoted you, and and um, you didn't care about the word no. So what happens to this lady who maybe has had um, I don't know a, a, a parent that didn't know about entrepreneurship and said, you know what, you need to keep a job, and you know what, you're a woman. You don't have yeah, and you don't have the the luxury to be um, you know you less than a they don't tell you that but they they show it in the way that 
you know, you should be, you should be, you should sit there. Don't say a word. What your opinion doesn't matter. And you start believing it. Yeah. You know, yes, and it's a shame. Yes. And and you're right. I mean, it, it, it's, it happens a lot, not just to men, to women, um, also, you know, ethnic background, race. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, we can go on and on. Um, hey, whoever you are, lady, give us a call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, contact me and I will help you. I will help you become uh, successful. If a millionaire is your thing, I can help you do that. If it's just success uh, in in feeling, um, you know, the the gratification that you could do anything, that's fine. I think either one of our shows uh, would do that. So, you know, it's a shame that, um, you know, she may not have had that growing up in life. But but again, I mean, even if somebody was putting me down you know, about my height, as an example, I yes. wouldn't use that as an excuse because people yes. did put me down too. Okay. Mm-hmm. They put me down for other things. They put me down for being a dreamer. You know, I was dumb enough to let my friends, uh, my close friends growing up, uh, I, I would share my dream with them. You know, hey, you know what? One day I'm going to be a manager of this place and uh, I'm going to have new clothes. And he said he's going to buy me a car and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, instead of them saying, hey, that's great. You know, um, the opposite happened. They're just like, ah, oh, come on. Why is he going to do that? You're crazy. It's never going to happen. Hey, 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 tell tell George, tell George what you told me about about, you know, getting the wardrobe, you know, and they'd snicker. Yes, um, and, yes. and that really, you know, I could have let that really affect me. Uh, but but I didn't thank God I, I didn't now this isn't a healthy thing to do but this really did happen to me you know I I was filled with a lot of anger about it a, a yes. lot of rage yes. um, and I'm not suggesting everybody go out there and go postal <laughs> that's not what, <laughs> not what I'm saying but what I did is I used that I used that as just a driving force like almost um, you know again I'm 16 to 18 so give me a break but but at that age it's like I'm gonna show you Yes. And almost yes. always, yes. almost always what happens is, you know, you uh, at least for me, it, it 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 started with an idea. All of a sudden, the idea becomes a reality. I start the beginning stages of success. Right. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. all, all those people that are like, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. They, they they're silent. <laughs> Crickets. OK. Yes. And, yes. Um, yes. you know, and then and then all of a sudden, as it continues you know, they don't say anything because they uh, half of them don't want to see this happen. Because, again, you know, people are advising based on how they've heard from others or whatever. Usually yes. at 18, it's not from experience. Somebody else. Well, I have a business and let me tell you what I did. They, but but they, they they won't hesitate to counsel you and say, oh, that's not going to work. Yes, okay? yes, yes. So as soon as you make it, as soon as you make it, you're successful. When you know it, all these same people come out of the woodwork. Oh, I knew you could do it. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So I, I guess what I'm saying is if I spent my time and my life, you know, listening to others about what I can and can't do, um, I probably wouldn't have such a storied life and such a fantastic journey because I, I, I'm just a regular guy. OK, I mean, I'm a college dropout. I, I hated school. OK, yes, I'm not yes. this, you know, come from a smart, learned family. I mean, we didn't have money or anything like that. But still and still, you know, opening up a business for me is is, is like like, you know, brushing my teeth. It's not a big deal. It's not mm-hmm. a big deal. Mm-hmm. Some of them will you'll fail and some of them you'll succeed. So those glass ceilings are, um, I think, self-imposed and you could blame society and you could blame your friends for it and, you know, and become a victim. Yes. Um, but you can also say, what else do you expect these people to tell you? They don't know. They usually, 99% of the time, don't know. Yes, They're talking yes. to you by like an un, un, you know, founded opinion, mm-hmm. uh, but they, mm-hmm. they haven't really done it themselves. Now, take us as an example. Somebody will call me uh, or call you, you know. I, I'm not qualified to counsel them and, you know, well, step into my office and lay on the sofa and let's just <laughs> talk about your child. No, I'm not going to do that. And, and normally I don't counsel people by saying, do this, do this, do this. Although I want to, yes, <laughs> God, yes. Trust me, I want to. <laughs> but what I'll do is I'll recall an experience of my own that I can share. And, and hopefully by listening that, Hey, you know what? You're not alone. 
I, I felt kind of the same way. Maybe, you know, I'm not a woman for sure, but, yes, but yes. I went through an experience that kind of made me feel, I think, the same way. And if you could take something out of that, that's what it's all about, right? Yes, yes. Yes. So, because um, I don't you, I found that there's a lot of people are using that. They're, they're victims. They're using their their past, their bad family, their abusive father, um, society, a woman. I mean, because we are a woman, and we're using these all as excuses and staying in victimhood, not and and not allowing themselves to actually come out and and be the person and and change a world. Because I'm sure they can. What advice would you give sure. those people? How do you get out of that, that victimhood? How do you get that, out of that funk? That that victimhood and that blaming situation where you're just blaming the world for your failures. Well, I'll tell you what what I did. I mean, I, I obviously didn't listen to the masses. I didn't listen to the critics. If I've listened to critics my entire life, um, I wouldn't be here today. OK, yes, I wouldn't be yes. here today. Uh, and I wouldn't have done the crazy, incredible things that I accomplished. Now, anybody can do them, by the way, but they don't. And there's a reason why they don't. OK, you 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 touched on it right now. Um, how do you break out of it? Very, very good question. Um, here's the thing. Surround yourself with the people you admire, um, especially like if, if works your thing, like I always talk about work, but this could be for life too. Yes, surround yes. yourself with people you admire. I mean, mentors didn't pick me growing up. I picked them. Okay. You choose your mentor. And by yes. the way, Google is not a mentor. Okay. Google <laughs> is like a newspaper, a huge bloated newspaper. And the people who pay the most for the ads uh, you're going to see those first. Okay. And somewhere buried in the obituary section uh, is probably going to be somebody that I would gravitate to, you know, the no name, but, yes, but yes. it's the, you know, do they have the characteristics that I admire uh, and, and, and that I want to, to have as well? Um, you know, uh, how do they handle things? How do they handle success? How do they handle failure? Very, yes. very important. Yes. Um, yes. You know, are they kind? Are they kind? Are they uh, exact? Are they stoic? Are they, you know, all these things. That's what I was doing at 16. So when all my friends were out, you know, hey, let's go here to the roller rink and, you know, let's talk to girls. Yeah, Not that I wasn't interested, but I, I just, you know, I just had an opportunity at 16 to meet, you know, my first mentor um, who, who I admired and I wanted to be like, and he wasn't wealthy. He didn't have a successful anything, but he had a dream. He had a yes, dream. Yes. And so I sat there and I watched him. And the cool thing for me is, you know, two years of watching him, I watched him become a multimillionaire right in front of my eyes. Wow. And when yes. I saw that, boom, boom. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was over game over. Yes. I'm just like, wow. I just have a first class education that you will never read in a textbook. You'll never see uh, today on Google. Okay. Yes. You're never going to yes. see it with tweets and follows and shares and likes and all that stuff. I watched it. It's like watching a movie, which is by the way, is one of my favorite things to do. So it was mm -hmm. so cool. I, and I had a front row seat. He reinforced that anybody can can do anything as long as they have a dream. Yes. And almost always in my life, I surrounded myself with mentors that shared the, the qualities that I wanted, that I admired. OK, and they're all the same. I mean, all these people get up early. They're people of their word. Um, yes. They work really, really hard. They're usually humble but at the same time they're dripping with confidence almost like arrogance sometimes right <laughs> and yes, you're like yes. wow what you know what a show off but you know they're very happy with their accomplishments but these were real people that i study mm -hmm. uh so mm -hmm. the advice that i would give about you know being a victim and everything like that look i was a victim if you want to go there uh, because I was ridiculed my entire young life, um, just like people feel like they're a victim because of their um, age or, or or race or um, uh, you know gender, uh, and and all those things. You know, if you believe them enough, they're going to affect your life. But if yes. you throw all that out and just say, well, you know what? Let me just try this. Let me surround myself just for a little bit with people that I admire, with people that I. Uh, want to follow and what you're going to find is now now you have somebody that 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 you're gonna you're gonna try and emulate 
that has the characteristics that you're looking for, not yes. the person that's never going to have them. Because let's face it, although everybody can be successful and everybody can, you know, break free of whatever it is that's holding them back, most people won't. Uh, yes. which is the sad yes. part because success is kind of a personal journey, right? Uh, and, and, and you, you either jump in or you just watch life go by, you know, on, on the sidelines, which is yes. kind of a shame. Yes. So yes. your show, I, I think, uh, is a credit to basically saying, Hey, you know, come on, let's go. Let me, let me just show you how, you know, these, these fears that most people have, you know, are just all in your mind. They're all in yes. your mind. Yes, yes. Um, but and, and how do you how can you show people that you are in control of your mind, right? The mind doesn't control you. Right. How do you do that? How do you convince, well, not convince something or show someone something like that? To teach them or 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 how well, do I how show would them? you show them that you know what? You are in charge of your mind, your mind doesn't control you. Because most well, people grow up and they think and they hear all the stories of their lives and they hear all the stories that people tell them and they grow up thinking that they're worse or they're not as good as enough or they're not pretty enough or they're not tall enough or whatever. And, they, and these are all things in their minds, right? It's just going round and round and round. Right. Um, how can you, you show hang- them that it's not, it's not them? That's not their stuff. It's the, they can say, hey, you bind, stop that. It's enough. Let's do right. this instead. Right. Well, let's talk about looks for a second. Let's talk about looks. You ever, everybody knows this one, right? They all have this very, very, you know, good looking friend, you know, and uh, growing up, you know, they, they would always attract the opposite sex or, you know, yes. whatever. Yes. Um, and they're like, oh my God, you know, but, but you, you notice also a lot of times the one that you don't consider the best looking, they're the ones that have the most attention and you got to ask yourself why it's yes. not the looks. Why? Well, it's confidence, it's aura, it's belief. You know, if you believe that you're going to strike out every time you approach somebody, then you probably will. Yes, but if yes. you believe you won't, you know, uh, you got a really good chance. Uh, and so belief isn't, again, with the home runs, right? Everybody's just like, well, you know what? I'm a victim and I'm not going to be able to do it. I need a home run. No, you don't. You need mild hurdles too, okay? Remember yes. uh, the usher at the theater, uh, you, you, you know what what a victory was for me sometimes? How fast I can clean the movie theater. Yes. Another time it was how fast I could clean the bathroom. You know, I mean, yes. it's, it's games, it's games. But I guess instead of calling it games, it's challenges that you set, little mild hurdles that you set that kind of reinforce that, hey, you know what? I did this in five minutes flat. Next time I'm going to try, you know, four minutes. Can I do it? And if you do it in four minutes, you know, you can't help but feel good. Now yes. I'm not running around saying, hey, I cleaned the bathroom in four minutes. But, <laughs> no, but, but in not. my head, it's just like, wow, you know, I'm pretty damn good. I'm pretty damn good. So yeah. it's those little, vic- if you don't have any coach around you, if you don't have a mentor around you, my best advice, and I hate giving advice, but my best advice would be is to set mild hurdles for yourself, you know, attainable hurdles uh, that you personally don't believe that you can do and that could be anything that could be anything and you're going to start seeing that if you believe you could do it mm-hmm. you will and then once you hit all hurdles and you achieve them then all your hurt um, and your challenge become to yourself becomes bigger and next thing you know you start growing that confidence Yes, yes, I love that. I love that. So to have those those little personal goals, and it also it becomes fun, right? It is fun. <laughs> so it you can fun. you can make cleaning your house fun. You can make cleaning those toilets, which are like horrible, or someone's gross <laughs> shower, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't do that. I didn't do that one, but but yeah, I get it. <laughs> Or cleaning your cupboards, like people hate cleaning cupboards and drawers. So maybe they can clean a drawer or a day, right? Yeah. What about I mean, what, what about rewards? Ahead. What about rewards? Rewards. Rewards is just you know walking a little bit taller, right? I mean, everybody you know thinks like, okay, I'm going to break the ceiling, and you know, for me, rewards was money when it comes to business. But you know, what yes. about what about when it doesn't come to business? Look, what you're going to find is what I'm saying 
doesn't just translate into money. It's not just business. And, you know, it's, it's every aspect of your life. It's an aura that eventually yes. you're going to have yes. where, you know, not cocky, right. Where people can't stand you, uh, but you can't stop from somebody from hating you. I mean, I'm sorry, but, yeah, well, you know, uh, well. <laughs> but, but, but it's, it's almost like, um, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. So walking into a store, just walking into a store, Yes. Um, I can, you know, somebody will open up a door for me. If I drop something, somebody will pick it up for me. And all my life, I'm just like, why are people doing these things for me? I, I didn't really know why, yes. but it comes down to the very basic thing of aura. It's that confidence that you exude and that likability, by the way, because I'm, I'm a regular guy. I, you know, I'm not an Ivy League guy. I didn't, like I said, didn't grow up in a, you know, from a wealthy family. Do you know who I am? I'm nobody. I'm yes. nothing, but I'm relatable. So I was really fun uh, to sit next to in board meetings because, you know, where everybody was all stuffy and, you know, they're wearing a shirt and tie and everything like that. I'm just like, OK, guys, let's let's bottom line this. Let's just let's just talk. And, um, you know, one of the things I would do in a board meeting was, look, stop taking notes. OK, if you like what I have to say, then take notes or we'll talk about it later. But right now, just enjoy a story. And everybody yes, would disarm, yes. everybody would disarm and they just sit back and they'd enjoy what I'm saying. More, more important, they, they'd understand what I'm trying to convey. Yes. Very, very important. If you're just sitting there worried, about, like we're not in an exam, right? We're not trying to pass a final or anything like that. What are you taking all these notes? You can't hear what I'm saying. You yes. can't see what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's little things in life that you, you, you got to make it fun because Karina, I think, um, I think, I'll, you know, I'll say for me, people are inherently lazy. I am. And if you don't put yourself out of that comfort zone, then you just like, you'll just sit there. I mean, you know, people need direction. We're human. We're human. Yes, okay. Yes, and we yes. have faults. Um, and uh, we don't realize how capable we are. Yes. Uh, and to make matters worse, there's always a TV that's going to kind of suck you in and, you know, keep you on the couch comatose that, you know, there's always something that's going to keep you from, you know, getting out there and enjoying life. But you have to interact with people. I know it's hard now, virtual and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to recommend uh, during a lockdown in some places uh, to do that. But, you know, the next best thing is like what we're doing It's yes. still interaction. Uh, interaction with people is a chemical reaction. You get something out of it that is just very, very difficult for me to explain right now. But when you get it, you know, I mean, it's just, it's almost like a brainstorming session, isn't it? Yes, you leave yes. revived, you leave yes. revived. Yes. Uh, and, and I loved doing that. I love it. And I think we, maybe we should do more of that. We should, people should be getting together and just talking ideas and throwing things around and just putting possibilities out and then seeing what comes out of it, what morphs out of it. Oh, that would be quite an exciting thing to do. Hey, maybe we should yeah. do that sometime. Yeah, we should. <laughs> I mean, look, some of the best, some of the best ideas that I have experienced were usually at the end of a night, at the end of dinner. Okay. And just yes. like, just that one extra conversation you know, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, and, and sometimes it just happens like that when you when you when you stop putting so much expectation on things. Uh, so as an example, you know, I would fly, you know, every week I'd be somewhere uh, for business. And, yes. uh, you know, my family would be like, you know, have a great meeting. Good luck. And I was just like, what are you wishing me luck? I'm just going to have a great dinner, a great meal. You know, that's that's how I looked at it. It was yes. uh, I'm going to have a great dinner with some great people. And the worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to have a great dinner and a great conversation. Um, almost always that great dinner and great conversation turned into some remarkable strides in business or landing an account or, you know, things like that. Yes, um, yes. You know, if, if I went into the meeting saying, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, you know, to, I always knew I won the meeting before I even started it. I mean, let's face it. And that comes again with confidence too. Yes. You know, but you need people to follow. You need people to observe, you know, and so many people are into, you know, reading about things and, you know, reading's good. I wrote a book. I'm not going to tell you <laughs> reading's not good. Reading's good, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but more so than reading is actually living 
living the story of life. And, and the way to do that is you gotta, you gotta get out there and you gotta interact with people and you gotta gravitate to the, towards the people that you admire, uh, you wanna be like, or you yes. have the most in common with, you know, just because, you know, some of them, my best friends don't share my philosophy. And so we'll still be friends, but they're not the people that I'm going to sit down and, and strategize or talk business with because yes. th- th- they're not those, those kind of people. Mm-hmm. Um, this was more important to me growing up when I needed that guidance. I needed mentoring. And, you know, my father was my first mentor because, you know, he, he put a belief in me that, you know, I can, I can be successful. Okay. Yes. But he's the same strict Greek school teacher that, um, you know, you got to go to school and you got to do this. And, you know, you know, I mean, so he was really, really strict, really strict. Okay. Mm-hmm. My first, what I consider mentor besides my father was somebody who was like his age, but, uh, completely opposite. I mean, he was cool. He was open. He was, um, you know, not, not, not that structured. And I was like, wow, this guy's cool. You know, he's really cool. Yes. And, you know, yes. it's like, he's my age, but he's not. And so I was attracted to, you know, following this guy and, and, and what makes him tick. So I grew up in a time where mentors were storytellers and I would absorb their personal experiences and take what I wanted out of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wasn't so focused on, well, you know, let me, let me Google, um, the statistics about this company or how many people succeed and how many fail and, you know, who tried this and let me read about it. Yeah. Those are good things to read about, but it's just like, you know, um, uh, application, you know, if you, if, if you go to college, you know, they'll tell you about practical application and they'll talk about theory. Yes, okay? Google yes. is theory. If you ask me, okay. Yeah. Practical application is going out there and doing it, learn by doing, yes. and you're going to yes. fail. Uh, that's part of life. I'm going to fail. I'm just got, I got many years to fail, but it's how you pick yourself back up. I've failed many, many times. That's part of life. That's part of life. I mean, you're not going to always be successful. Uh, uh, and if you didn't fail once in a while and, and learn something new, you'd always keep failing the same way. Right. Yes. But, yes. Um, and, and, and so you have to, you have to go in there. You have to immerse yourself in something and see what happens. And you'll be surprised what happens, by the way. Um, yes, yes, I love that. And how many times when you fail and you and you look back and you realize, wow, you know what, if that had worked out and I'd been successful there, I wouldn't have had this beautiful thing that I've got now. Um, so there's many blessings in failure, right? Yeah, there, there are blessings in failure, but I, I never look back. Uh, I, I just constantly want to reinvent myself. So it's oh, not yes. like, if I did this, <laughs> if I did that, then this would, look, life is a crossroad. Every second of every day, you make a choice. You have the power to make a choice. And so, you know, if you went this way, there'd be infinite outcomes and who knows what would happen. If I go this way, infinite outcomes, who knows what happens. I promise you, no matter what direction you go, you're going to succeed and you're going to (laughs) fail. You can't avoid failure. No matter what infinite crossroads you choose, you're going to fail. You can't avoid it. Okay. Even if you, you sat in a glass bubble. And you're just like, oh, okay, I'm not going to fail. You're still going to fail. You already <laughs> failed. You're in a glass bubble. Bam. Okay. <laughs> yes. Life, life yes, according to Dino, it. right? <laughs> I'm charged. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm charged. But what happened this week is just truly exciting uh, for me because, um, you know, it's immediate gratification, isn't it? In some yes, ways. Yes. It's, yes. Uh, you know, you, 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 you go through life um, and, and, and selfishly I'm pursuing my own dreams and my own vision and well, you know I, I, I did it right to, yes yes and then and then you know I write a book and I'm just like buried in a book that you know I don't know how to write I've never written a book before so I'm just like <laughs> how, how do I do this and then the book gets published and it's out there and yeah you're making sales and everything but but all of a sudden this this unexpected feedback that I'm getting that that did it for me I mean that's just like wow okay yes. so so what I've done now, here's what I'm hearing, which is the coolest thing in the world. Yes. Coolest thing in the world. Yes. Yes. I love that. Let's just, just go back because I'm sure our listeners want to know, how did your interview go with the, uh, after, with your, on your TV show, or whatever it was, how was that? And were the, did the radio you get any show? Other, yes, on the radio show, sorry. And um, did you get any other questions? 
Um, you know, her her segment was about never giving up, which, you know, it's the story of my life, right? Yes, I, mean, never, yes. I wrote a whole book. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just basically the ability to get up and keep going, get up and keep going. Yes. Now, I've, I've, you know, I've had horrible business, you know, failures. Um, I had personal failure with addiction and, 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 you know, trust me, it wasn't fun. Okay. At the time it wasn't fun, but I learned something from it. So it's not like, uh, you know, sticking your hand in a flame and it burns and you're just, oh, well, you know, next time if I stick my hand in a flame, maybe it won't burn. Hey, it will burn. It'll burn. There's no, you know, you can't look at it any other way. So uh, I, I I recognize really quickly that I'm going to fail. I just don't want to always fail the same way. Yes. I don't want to fail the same yes. way. So I want to pick up a valuable piece of uh, knowledge and experience from my failures uh, as well as from my successes. So, so you know, I, I was talking about this, but again, 19 minutes, 18 minutes, whatever it was, it's not enough time, you know, and I give her credit. She had to cover 40 years of business um, <laughs> in 19 minutes, <laughs> which, which pretty is pretty, yeah, it's pretty hard to do, but you know, it was just, um, answering the questions or reinforcing and, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, the, the main, the main thing that she asked me towards the end about, you know, uh, never giving up is just like, just, you have to believe that we all deserve, uh, to be happy that we all deserve to be successful, that we all deserve to be able to do, you know, whatever it is. I mean, I always preach that, you know, to live life without limits. Yes, um, yes. And I, and, and I really mean that. So, I mean, that's kind of how the show went. It wasn't like I didn't have the chance to answer the lady <laughs> uh, or, or anything like that, but it was kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Look, I, I'm not used to this, you know, radio stuff and this Zoom stuff. I came from a different world. Um, and because I hung out with, mentors who were old, old, like my father, when, when I was 16, I kind of like, and they were old school too. So, yes, you yes. know, it's like this old guy that's gone through life, you know, kind of working, working, working. And I had the success. I always had somebody in the background that was supportive and helped me as technology changed. I mean, yes. they would take care of this. They would take care of that just to, to allow me to continue pursuing my my dream right mm -hmm. now you know fast forward you know after um i decide to retire if that's what you want to call it and um i i decide you know I'm, obviously my marriages didn't work out so i'm alone you're talking to a guy that doesn't really know how to even set their cable or or you know i mean how do you do this how do you do the login how do you do this <laughs> this is a whole new world for me okay somebody said hey you know um on saturday you're going to do a podcast and it's on Twitch. I'm like, what the hell is Twitch? I don't, you know, Twitch, Twitch. I don't know what that means, you know, <laughs> but there's just so many different mediums now, yes. but it all comes down to the same thing. Like, again, people are, people are grand. I think we're moving so fast. So, yes, so, so yes, fast. Yes. And people don't have time to listen to a sermon. Uh, nobody wants to be lectured to. Nobody wants to be told what to do. Uh, but, but people are missing a storyteller. That's, yes. that's what's missing. So you want to talk about that void? Like when I was 16, I saw a void in the market yes, and I'm yes. like, Hey, you know, the cleaning <laughs> business again in a brand new world. So let's throw out the excuses that, you know what? I'm old and I don't know this new uh, world. No, and that's, that's I'm not, not successful. I don't know anything about what we're doing in this digital age. Right. But the, the song remains the same. Yes. Doesn't it? Yes, because, you know, you start getting immersed in, in doing the and I'm starting to enjoy these interviews, by the way, yeah, it, you can tell. Right. Yes. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> but the, then, then I start seeing this fundamental thing that I believe is missing. I don't know how I know or understand my audience, but I I think I do. I think yes. I do. And that's good because I'm staying grounded. And I'm like, what's missing? Why are people coming to me? Why are people asking me these questions out of the blue? I mean, you know, I never said I had a talk show. This isn't Dear Abby or anything like that. I mean, you know, where I, you know, give advice, but it's because um, I'm naturally excited about life, uh, about business. And I have, I have yes, so yes. much to say because I have all these experiences that I never shared before. And so uh, when somebody asks me a question, instead of telling them what to do, uh, Cause they're never going to listen anyway. If no, they're like, no, me. no. <laughs> right? I say, Hey, you know what? That reminds me of this. Look I, in my book, 
that's less than 10% of my life. Yes. There's so much <laughs> up here I, that I got to get out. I got to get out. So I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And, um, you know, um, the, 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 the response and the viewership and all that stuff on the, just the little segments that I've done just, you know, through the roof. I love it. Very exciting. So yeah. we 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 determined that we're going to do this every week, right? Yeah. I want to put it out to the audience that if you have any questions, just comment below. Um, if you want this awesome Dino to just <laughs> give you this powerful response, we'll just respond and he'll respond and come back to you with the, the perfect answer, right, for him. And for you, just show you, like, the story can just – when you resonate with the story, you can understand at a deeper level and right. then and she, take what you need out of that, right? Yeah, and chances are uh, I've had so many experiences because, again, I was never afraid. So I tried a lot of things, tried a lot of yes. things, right? And uh, a lot of them succeeded. A lot more uh, failed. But, but you know, these experiences, chances are that, um, you know, most of the questions that are going to be asked – I can share a personal uh, snippet of my life. And it's kind of cool because, you know, I'm not putting somebody on the spot. I never want to do that. But, you know, um, you know, I think deep down inside within all of us, I think it helps when people know that somebody fails too. Um, yes. and, and how it felt for them. You know, I always yes. tell people in business, remember what failure feels like. Remember what it... You know, not, not not the words. Well, it failed because you know, according to the charts and the graphs, there's a no. no. What did it feel like? What did it feel like? I'm sure it sucked, but yes. let's get past that. What did it feel like for you? Because if you're ever on a path and things start feeling, the feeling is a, just a wonderful emotion. It's a wonderful emotion, and people discount it. They think facts are more important than yeah. feeling. Yes. Uh, yes, and I think the opposite. I think the opposite. So yeah, I would love to. Are you kidding? Every week, answer a question from one of your guests on my show, on your show and my show. Um, hell yeah, I, I want to do it. I would love it. Cool. So the challenge is on, people. Let's, Let's see. go. Let's, Let's go. Let's talk to Dino and see how far we can push, right? How far yeah, we can yeah. go with this. It's very exciting. Um, cool. Can you give us, Dino, before we go, um, just something exciting for the week? For our listeners. It's almost Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, for that? next week, right? Or for the weekend. I don't know. But if uh, just, okay. Do one thing that is out of your comfort zone, whether it's big or small. Just try one thing that's out of your comfort zone and see how that makes you feel. I think a lot of times we get real, real caught up in staying in our comfort level. This makes me feel good. This, uh, not so much. But what you're going to find is as you keep stretching that little comfort zone bubble, okay, yeah. then all of a sudden you're going to start expanding your horizons. You're going to start feeling that this is comfortable too. Well, let's go a little further. This is comfortable too. And you're going to find out, here's the plug, there is no box. There is no <laughs> box. Just like my yes. book, just yes. like my book. Yes. Um, you know, very, very important. Uh, give yourself mild hurdles. Uh, if you don't have somebody that, that that you can follow, if you don't have a mentor that you've selected yet or anything like that, challenge yourself, challenge yourself and see how that feels. Thank you, Dino. And just, just remind the uh, listeners where they can find your awesome book. Sure, thank you. Uh, uh, you could go to Amazon. It's available at Amazon. And I, I've, I just found out it's available at a lot of places too. Books a Million, um, uh, Moby, uh, or you could go to my website, dinomiliotis.com, and uh, it'll it'll lead you. Uh, how's that for somebody who's trying to sell a book? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's out there. It's available a lot of places. What's the name um, of the book again? There Is No Box <laughs> by Dino Miliotis. How's that? I love it. And and I love it. So remember, I think we will end with that, right? There is no box. Yep. Um, let that just sink in. Thank you so much, Dino. This was awesome. And I look forward to chatting to you every week. Um, you got it. We're going it. to come up with some exciting things together, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And remember, 
subscribe to the to YouTube or subscribe to the podcast so you can see Dino every week and yeah, and let's enjoy go, let's this. go, subscribe, let's go. subscribe, right? <laughs> subscribe. That's, that's what everybody's got to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. See you right. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Right to the end. Now, if you want to know more about breaking fear and if it's keeping you stuck, check out the quiz. The details are below. Subscribe so you can hear some more of this delicious um, conversations. And then watch out for my book, The Clank of Chains, which is coming out very soon. Thank you again for being here and we will see you next time. Bye.